Hi everyone, my name is Florence. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is another book review. I'm going to be reviewing Loveless by Alice Oseman, which is a book that I recently finished. I read this book because a friend recommended it to me and also I watched Heartstopper and I was really excited about reading more of Alice's work. Uh, this is actually the first Alice Oseman book that I've ever read. I do plan to read Heartstopper next. It's just graphic novels aren't really my thing, so it's been hard to get myself into it. That's why I chose to read a novel of theirs first before diving into graphic novels because I'm not I don't really read graphic novels so I think that might be hard to get into so before we go any further I did want to say quickly thank you to everyone who watched my most recent video which was a review of choices by Messer Moon I really did not think that video would do that well that video was just something I felt like making but I'm very happy that so many people watched it and liked it so thank you to everyone who supported it and more book reviews will be coming I just started just lovers so look forward to hearing my my review on that later on. So Loveless, where do I even start? I love that this book exists. I love that there is representation for aromantic and asexual people and I think this book is so so important not just for aromantic and asexual people but for people like me who aren't aromantic and asexual who just wanted to learn more about different identities. I think books like this are great at teaching other people about identities who might be curious and I feel like I've learned a lot. I myself do not identify as asexual but reading this book was great in teaching me about how asexual and a romantic people feel. I think books like these are so so great. I love reading books about queer people discovering their identities and I feel like people rarely talk about aromanticism and asexuality and it's so so important that there is a book about a protagonist who is discovering their identity. So this book was a very light read. I love that about it, that it wasn't anything super heavy. It was kind of like a a fun book. It was it wasn't that long. It was easy to read. The characters were very likable. It was just a fun read overall, like a light summer read, honestly. But I feel like it still did a very, very good job of showing what being asexual and aromantic is like and how the protagonist realizes that and the whole journey and just explaining the identity and showing it. I think it did a really great job in that. So our main protagonist is Georgia and it starts when she finishes high school and she realizes that, oh my god, it might be a big deal that I haven't kissed anyone yet. I really related to that feeling like you're missing out on the teenage experience. I didn't date at all in high school. I, I didn't really have crushes either. I only had one crush but uh, looking back I don't even know if it was a crush or just like me projecting onto someone because I wanted to feel love but not actually experience it. This is a whole nother topic for my therapy but like that's where our novel starts and there's a lot of other queer representation as well. We have Rooney who is bisexual I think or pansexual, I can't remember. Tell me in the comments. And then we have Pip who is a lesbian and then we have Jason, the straight best friend and uh, we have other asexual characters and a non-binary character and there's just a lot of representation all around in this book and I really really love that. So Georgia goes off to university and she's so ready to have these experiences but she she's kind of forcing herself to want it and I really understood that because our society really is built on romance and romanticizing romance and I think one of the biggest messages of this book that I really really loved was that friendship can also be a type of true love and that was just so beautiful. Georgia goes through a bit of an identity crisis and then she hurts people along the way and I, I like that she makes mistakes as well. I like protagonists who make mistakes and then make up for them and and you know apologize and things like that because I feel like when we're young we're all kind of stupid and we all make mistakes and and it's it's just normal to hurt people sometimes especially when we're figuring ourselves out like she really wanted to like Jason it just she needed some time to figure out that it wasn't happening. I also liked Rooney's storyline I really felt for her how she didn't want to get emotionally involved after her abusive ex and 
Uh, I like that we got a different storyline with her. And I also love how Rooney and George are kind of such opposites, but they work so great as friends. And there was that one scene when Rooney got Georgia flowers, and that was like so sweet. I love that so much. I really, really thought she was going to get the flowers for Pip, and the fact that she got them for Georgia was just like so sweet. I adored it so much. And then we have uh, Pip, who when she feels like the person doesn't like her back, she just immediately starts starts hating them and honestly I've done this before relatable <laughs> I liked the representation of Georgia's friendships but I feel like I look we got a lot more of Rooney and Georgia than uh, Georgia and Pip or Georgia and Jason I feel like Jason was in the book a lot but I still feel like I don't really know him at all and I felt like that was missing. I feel like we know more of Pip, but I maybe would have liked more like flashbacks maybe, or I don't know. I feel like we got a lot more of the Rooney Georgia friendship than the other friendships in the book. And least of all, Georgia and Jason. And then we, we got a bit more of Pip and Georgia, but also props to Georgia for not just like blatantly telling Pip or Rooney that the other likes them because if this would have been me in this situation, I think I would have just gotten frustrated at one point and be like, Guys, figure it out. You like each other. Now kiss. <laughs> uh, we also had another asexual character who helped Georgia a lot throughout her journey, which was Sunil. I, I hope I'm pronouncing their name right. I love that there was like an older, wiser gay who was who was like, helping Georgia on her journey and and he was also like such a fun character and and when that other guy was hating on asexuality like I got so frustrated and I love that Sunil is is like we should be in, it's about inclusivity and the other guy's arguments were just so stupid but I feel like a lot of people in the LGBT community feel that way that it's like we're now accepting everyone and and like that's somehow bad I love that this book showed that toxic side of the community as well and showed someone who was fighting against it and fighting for every single identity to be welcome and included because that is that is so important I love that it's about theater kids as a theater kid myself absolutely love it um, a bit cliche that it was once again Shakespeare but it's fine <laughs> I love that they were doing a play together and I that was just so sweet and a nice little frame to the story overall uh, one thing that I really love that I really want to mention is uh, I love the writing style for one and I love that it wasn't like strictly put into chapters but like there were parts and each part had a title but it wasn't like chapter one or chapter one title it was just the title they varied in length and they just focused on different aspects and still kept the story moving on like I really love this this formatting and this style of writing and this book was just honestly so sweet and also also funny and, and fun on and we, we not only got Georgia's story but we got the other characters story and it did a great job of like like showing how obsessed society is with romance and how hard it can be when you don't fit a box in society society likes putting people into boxes and they have this idea of who you should be and and like what you should like and just categorizing people and and like as someone who is like queer and non-binary like I don't fit into boxes either and and I understand that struggle so even though I'm not not asexual like I could relate to some of the struggles in that sense of like not fitting into society's boxes and having trouble being proud of that and that just causing fear because oh my god what is my life gonna be like uh, to end this video I wanted to uh, read aloud some of the parts of the book that I saved because I liked it so much again so happy that this representation exists this is so so important and I'm so happy that there are more books about queer people discovering their identities and just showing these identities in such a positive light this is this is so so important and I'm so happy that this exists and it's taught me a lot and it was great. Oh, this one. When Sunil, he volunteers to be to be Viola from one of the Shakespeare plays, can't remember which one, and he just goes, just give me all of the roles that mess around with gender, please. Me. This is absolutely me. <laughs> that was so relatable. This, just, just this one sentence. It was reassuring to know that he too had felt some anxiety about being asexual. People didn't always love who they were right away. And I feel like this is so, so important. Like we always talk about pride and everything, but pride is a journey and we need to talk more about 
how isolating and fearful it can feel. You don't love who you are right away. Sometimes you hate it at first and that's okay. It's all part of the journey. Pride is is a journey. You you get you get there. You don't start off being proud of who you are or loving who you are. It it takes time, it takes work takes acceptance. Oh, this was also so relatable. I was angry at fate for dealing me these cards, even though I knew there was nothing wrong with me. Lots of people were like this. I wasn't alone, love yourself, whatever. I didn't know how to get to the point where this would stop feeling like a burden and instead feel like something good. I feel like a lot of people who don't fit society's boxes feel this way at first and that's so normal and I love that this is showing that, that you can be angry, it's normal. Like, it's a process. You're not proud right away. Every time I saw two people cozying up in the library or in the cafeteria, every time one of the authors I'd like posted a new fan fiction, I was angry at the world for making me hate who I was. Yeah, it's the world that sucks. If we would have, if we would live in a better world, maybe it would be easier to accept how we're different, but that's not the case. And it's so important that this is talked about as well. This new identity felt like a loss when in reality it should have been a beautiful discovery. Yeah, sometimes you just feel a loss when you figure out who you are and it all takes time and I love that this shows the different steps and how normal these feelings are. Oh, this is so important. Friends are automatically classed as less important than romantic partners. I'd never questioned that. It was just the way the world was. I guess I'd always felt that friendship just couldn't compete with what a partner offered and that I'd never really experienced a real love until I found romance. But if that had been true, I probably wouldn't have felt like this. It's, it's about when she's in a fight with Jason and Pip. And this is so, so important. Like, the world really has us believing that friendships are less important than romance, when in reality, sometimes they're more important. Friends will stick by you when girlfriends, boyfriends, partners, they'll come and go. And I love that this book has the message that like friendship can also be a form of true love. And that's just so beautiful. And I love that so much. And it's true. Okay. It's, it's very true. And I loved reading it on paper. I had been so desperate for my idea of true love that I couldn't even see it when it was right in front of my face. The fact that she realizes that her friend's are her true love was just so beautiful that one of my favorite parts of the book just because you're gay doesn't mean you can't be a bigot this is so important and so true and we need to stand up to those bigots in the end that was the problem with romance it was so easy to romanticize romance because it was everywhere yeah it's like always shoved down our throat that's why that's why when you like enjoy being alone or it's seen as weird when why does romance have to be the be all end all? Like I feel like other things can also bring you happiness and we just tend to forget that. And we feel a loss when we don't have romance even though we, are, we can have a bunch of great things in our life going on as well that make us happy. Like romance isn't the only way for you to be happy at all. It was in falling leaves, crumbling wooden doorways, scuffed cobblestones and fields of dandelions. It was in the touch of hands, scrawled letters, crumpled sheets, and the golden hour. A soft yawn, early morning laughter, shoes lined up together by the door, eyes across the dance floor. I could see it all, all the time, all around, but when I got closer, I found that nothing was there. A mirage. This was just such a beautiful passage that I, I had to share. <laughs> now this one just made me laugh. Please calm down. No, I am. I was up until 6 a.m. this morning planning the rest of the show. I know. We live together. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and that's the last quote that I have to share today. I hope you got something from this review or at least enjoyed it. If you want more book reviews, then definitely subscribe below and watch some of my other reviews. I have other ones on the channel as well. Uh, if you like channels talking about mental health, queerness, books, things like that, then do consider checking out my channel and subscribing if you enjoy it. And I will see you next week for a brand new video. Toodles! Bye.